I've always wanted a Volkswagen Beetle. And the reason I've bought it is actually really rather sensible for me. I've got myself the off-road smart car with a roof tent on the top. That's not very practical for everyday use. I've got the massive ambulance. You can't even take that through a drive through for a coffee. So I thought I need to get myself something sensible. But I also need a work vehicle. So the plan is to potentially chop off the back of it, which is a little bit wibbly wobbly looking anyway, and turn it into an off-road pickup truck. And for a thousand pounds, it's got heated leather seats, it's automatic, it's proper old school as well. Electric windows, I love it. The only thing is, when I bid on the internet for it, I didn't go and look at it first. So I just jumped on the train, went to London, drove it home and noticed there's a few little lights on the dashboard and this wheel sounds like it's about to fall off, but the boot works beautifully. That's potentially the bit I'm gonna chop off though. So I phone my mate Dan, he's gonna come and give it a once over. He's like a proper mechanic -y grown up person. But I think with a little bit of care and attention, this will be good as new. And I just wanted to buy an old Beetle because I love them. Dan, how's it going? Very relaxed, nice to see you. Likewise. Now, I may have got myself in a bit of a pickle, Dan. I bought what I thought was a bargain of a car, and it turns out it's probably not quite as good as I thought. Would right. you mind coming and having a look for me? Let's have a look. Let's see what you've got. So the bodywork looks quite good, but I've noticed it's clearly had a bit of a bump. That's full of silicon there. That's broken. Water gets in there, and that's why the central locking doesn't work electric opening sunroof. How about that? That's worth a grand on its own. Not bad. Unfortunately, the water gets in and it leaks. The tires look a little bit crusty, so it might need some more of those. Right, do you want to look under the bonnet? Go on then. I've not looked under the bonnet yet. Ta-da! Beast, right? So the oil looks relatively new. Yeah. Which is kind of a red flag. What? I thought new oil was a good thing. If it's had a service recently and it's not got any other issues. Well, it didn't have any service history, which again isn't ideal. Right. Oh yeah, that looks a bit um, not ideal, doesn't it? Ideally, it'd be oily and not coolant -y. That belt looks uh, a little bit perished. Oh wow, yeah. That doesn't <laughs> even look like a belt anymore, does it? But. Everything else is there, isn't it? The number plate's on, the battery's connected. It's just the oil is a bit of an issue and the engine doesn't work very well. But apart from that, bargain. <laughs> what <laughs> lights are on the dash? Um, all, all, the, all the orange lights are on the dash, but it's got potential. Do you want to start it? We'll see what potential sounds like. Not really, you're, <laughs> you're gonna say it's rubbish. <laughs> Doesn't sound bad. Sounds all right, doesn't it? Nothing's falling off. Yeah, shut it off then. That's an interesting noise. Dan didn't seem convinced by my beetle or the noises that it makes. So with the engine not sounding too good, I decided we needed a plan B for the pickup. Surprise! What's that? <laughs> well, I confess, Dan, I felt guilty having bought this car without checking it over. Why didn't you? Tell me you were going to go look at another one. Because I wanted to prove to you that I'm a grown up and I can learn from my mistakes. And what I did this time, before I gave the man the money, I made this bit go up the bonnet, right. checked the oil cap, and it wasn't milky. Right. Did you check anything else, or was that about it? I checked it was silver, because I prefer the silver <laughs> to the black. You don't look as upset with me this time no, as you were when yeah. you first saw the black one. It's more powerful, a bit more fun. I knew you'd be pleased. And check out the back, it's got a spoiler. It's more underneath that I'm bothered about, yeah, shall we? Yeah, uh, the nitty shall gritty, we? yeah. But before you start, if this one is as good as I hope, yeah. don't fear, I have a plan for the Black Beetle. So all is not lost, but it doesn't involve the engine. It's exciting. I think you're either going to love it or hate it. A V5. Nice, right? Yeah. So you, you promised me. Have a look. But that's reassuring. Look that's how a lot clean better. it is, there's no milkiness at all. A nice dark oil, that's what you want. You don't want something that's, unless it's got good service history at a reputable dealer, you don't want a car, oh, it just so happens to have an oil change just before you buy it. But what's oh, that? Yeah. 
<laughs> that the man told me that there was a slight issue with the temperature of the car, so he fitted a temperature gaugey thing. Right. I thought that was good because he cared. We'll check that over. We'll check that over. But Would you, you like the way he fitted you, uh... it? Look. <laughs> well, I, I thought that were you. What? Because he's just rammed three rusty old screws into a piece of plastic. Yeah, in, into the airbox, the clean side of the airbox as well. You know oh, yeah. where the clean air goes in. Yeah, uh, yeah so that is a piece of me. That some holes there. Yeah, it's all right. He's already fitted a lift kit. He was going to make it an off-roader and then gave up. So it's already got a two-inch lift. But so far, you prefer this to the black one. This looks a lot better. Yeah, it looks like it's in a lot better condition. And it's a manual. So if we're doing any off-roading in this at the end, a manual gives you more control. We can make a start on this, and then I want to tell you what I've got in mind for that one. While Dan fits the off-road tyres and spacers to the pickup beetle, I'm cooking up an idea for the black one. It seems too good to just scrap, I think, and it's not saleable. I couldn't sell a car that isn't running right. But there are some positives about this. Ignore the engine bit. The interior is really nice. It's got a lovely leather sofa seat in the back. So what I'm thinking is, could this be a caravan. <laughs> Not a traditional caravan that you stand up in, obviously more like a, a teardrop trailery type thing. But imagine inside a dining area, sofas that turn into a bed. At the back, the boot pops up with a shower area and maybe a fridge and a food prep kind of sinky bit. And in here, imagine if this became like an outdoor barbecue cooking area. <laughs> so that's the only problem is, I've never taken an engine out of a car before. Is it a big job? Yes, but we can do it. <laughs> Let's go for it. Okay, right. I'm going to undo these. They look like they're within my capabilities. You want to keep this grill, don't you? Do you know what? That is missing on the silver one. It's already cracked on that side, though. Perfect. When I crack the other side, it'll be <laughs> symmetrical. There we are. Oh, there we go. Dan, what do you think to a black bumper on a silver car? No. You know why I agree? Rubbish idea. You reckon there's nothing on the inside of the door? No, because mine's off at that side. Yeah, yeah, mine too. Mine's off. Mine's already off. No. No. Ooh. No. Here we go, look. I'm going to take the battery off because I can do that. 13 mil spanner. 10 mil, maybe. Yeah, that's what I meant. 10. Is this something you'd recommend, Dan? Buy two of the same car so you've got spares? Would you do it? Yeah, I've got three Civics. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel stupid buying two of the same car when you've got three of the same car. When are we turning one of your Civics into a caravan? Never. You wait till you've seen this, then you'll want one. Another thing wrong with this car that I didn't tell you was the battery didn't have any charge and wouldn't charge and it was also rubbish. Yeah, it's all gonna come now, isn't it? Right, three, two, one, go. Ooh, got lights oh, attached. Let's put a temperature probe into the meat on the barbecue that goes onto the dashboard to tell us how warm our meat is. <gasps> oh, that doesn't work. Because this is the only vehicle in the world where, <laughs> bold statement, that doesn't have a temperature gauge. Have you noticed? This Beetle doesn't have a temperature gauge, it only has a, your engine is cold gauge. That's really ugly. I take the crash bar off. Yeah. Because this is the structural part of the chassis that okay. you could bolt your A-frame onto. Ooh. You think the A-frame could use the same mounting points as the crash bar? That would make sense, because that's strong, you'd hope. So the A-frame just goes dunk, dunk, there. Brilliant. We've got the bolts for it. We've even got this plate. I 
Right, you ready? Spot on. Right, we need to find an A-frame. Do I buy an old trailer? And then run the wiring loom to the back to those lights. What weight rating is the trailer going to be? Medium. Medium trailer. <laughs> Out. Whee. That's the puppy. Ugh. Gravity. Oh, gravity. Ah, oh, it's got holes both ends. <laughs> I'm doing all this because I'm trying to save the windscreen washer fluid. Got it. If I rest it like that, I would really like to save this as the tap of the caravan. Imagine that, Dan. <laughs> Put in the stalk on the steering wheel and water comes out the tap. But it would taste a little bit of yeah, windscreen wash, wouldn't it? That's what I was thinking. We'll recycle it, then we know it's gone to a good place, yeah. and we'll buy a new pump. Put screen wash in the car, right? That's true, I'm gonna put this in mine. all auto box stuff. No one likes automatics anyway. We're almost free of all the pipes and stuff. Almost. Just a really satisfying noise, isn't it? It's good to go. Right, Dan, I know I'm usually quite haphazard, but I don't like the idea of having to lift this engine up afterwards, so can we drop it onto here, please? Slide it under. There you go, it's finally out. It's absolutely perfect and massive. It's a lot bigger than I thought, but also I have a confession. I thought removing an engine was probably four bolts, six, maybe 10 at most. Yeah. That was a lot of work, wasn't it? <laughs> and I say a lot of work, you did most of it, I just watched. I think it's, it's all the ancillaries, it's all the fluids, it's getting everything out of the way. And I mean, we wanted to remove quite a lot more as well than what we normally would. Imagine, you turn up to your campsite, everyone else has got a boring tent or a white caravan, you rock up, make your bed up for the evening, draw the curtains, glass of wine, glass of beer, come round, pop the bonnet, smoke comes pouring out, you've got a couple of steaks on there, that'd be the business, wouldn't it? I must admit, I am buying into your vision. See? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it does need a bit of a trim. We need to get rid of all this extra stuff here, carve that round, and I'm actually thinking the finishing touch for me, whilst you've got a barbecue, all those hot coals, meat smoking going on, I think there should be some sort of hinge up mechanism that allows you to spin a chicken, like a rotisserie chicken, drill powered. Shall we celebrate with dinner? Yeah. Not cooked here, but by a professional. That sounds a good idea. <laughs> Thanks to Dan, the engine's out of the black car, but while it's a shell of a beetle, I'm keen to turn my attention to the pickup conversion. 